All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is take that uh, intake body off. You got a board here I set on top. Makes it easier to reach. I've already disconnected the, uh, the cable. And these are half inch bolts, so I'm just pulling them out. And we'll get rid of this. No, I don't have power tools. Disconnected the TPS there. There's four bolts here, all half inch. Pretty easy to get to. And yes, I do. Plan on replacing all of the gaskets that uh, I'm touching once I get the main job down here. body eh, it's a little dirty nothing crazy I'll probably get it a spray off but uh, there's no cracks everything's complete so we'll set this off to the side Disconnect the IAC here. There we go. And I've got the EGR valve attached, which I'll have to disconnect that again. I don't know. Can I reach things at this point? Let me take a look. It's a possible. But uh, it's definitely going to be a lot easier if I remove this. Of course, I think I'll take the throttle cable bracket off. Looks like it's half inch also. <clears throat> Two very short bolts. Very simple. Get the bracket separated. And I'm just gonna set it off the side, get it out of the way. I can easily reach. Yeah, I think I can reach the bolts on this side. But you know what? Even though I'm planning on only taking off one side and checking them. You know, if I'm going to go this far, I'll probably just go ahead and either take them all off, get them cleaned, or take them all off and, and uh, get them replaced. 
So, looks like a 7 16th for the intake manifold. So, let me get that. I don't have it in front of me. All right. The bolts for the upper intake manifold are actually 3 8 So, I'm going to take that off in a minute. First, I'm going to get that AGR valve disconnected again. I've had it off once already. Let me get this out of the way. Just so I can move it a little bit, give you more room. Get the sensor disconnected. And take the vacuum line off. It doesn't want to come off. There we go. Now for the EGR, there's one large nut on the, uh, the tube that's going down to the exhaust. See, I've had this off before. Should be enough to get the wrench on it now. Mm -hmm. Come on. There we go. There we go. Like you said the CGR valve is pretty clean, not a lot of rust. So this was fairly easy to take off. nut is down and I'm just going to leave the EGR valve attached to the manifold. Take this gasket out of the way. If it comes to it I could reuse it. All right next step are the 3 8 inch bolts. What you need the socket. There's not one buried on the back because I can't see it. <clears throat> one down here. So there's four visible, two on each side. And they should be fairly easy to remove once you break them loose torque on them felt to be about hmm, maybe 35 there's one Three, 
It's a bit warm out today. A little bit better view so I pulled out these four bolts here and of course there was four bolts on the uh, throttle body intake overall it looks fairly clean these just snap in place up here just some little holders an EGR valve that one nut is right here okay well the Sun was beating down on my poor little GoPro here a little bit too much. It overheated, had to replace the battery. So at this point, I've got the bolts out. The body is loose. So I'm gonna set the camera down here and uh, I'll pick it back up in a second. All right, let's see how much time we have before the sun kills it again. So the throttle body is disconnected. Everything else is loose. Let's see if I can pull this up and away. Yeah. Got this one sensor down here. It's kind of hard for me to reach. There we go. All right, so we have some vacuum hoses attached to the rear. There's one right there. And the other one broke. And I really don't know where the heck that was coming from. I'll have to fix that. It broke right here. Now was it broke before? I don't know. Could that have stopped it from starting? Hmm. I don't know. An intake leak? Mm, I'm going to say no. I would have probably let it start, but would have run like crap. So in the meantime, I'm just going to pull this out of the way and set it off to the side here. So, see something down in the intake, which I don't like. Piece of gasket. Yeah, gasket material came off. Most of it came off of the uh, housing, but a piece of the gasket was still laying here. And a piece did fall into the intake. That was the only piece. Overall, it's fairly clean. Does it need minimal cleaning before I put the old, uh, new one on there? So at this point, I might as well just start with the left-hand side. I'm going to disconnect this wiring harness, pull up those spikes, get that kind of moved out of the way, and then disconnect the two nuts that are holding the fuel rail on. Um. I'm not going to disconnect the fuel line at the moment. I think I'll just be able to pull this out of the way. And leave everything intact. Because I, I don't need to really disconnect the fuel rail itself. So, I'm going to get this done and I'll be back. Alright, just a quick segment here. Once you remove these two nuts, you can remove this bracket. Hopefully. Get caught up with the wire there. All right. So the bracket, basically its sole purpose is just to have a uh, method of attaching the wiring harness. The wiring harness, I just used a flathead screwdriver, kind of slid it underneath the wiring harness to pull up these spikes out of the bracket. Then underneath the bracket, if you can see, we've got the studs coming up out of the intake, and there's two nuts there that are holding the fuel line or fuel rail down. 
And I've got all the uh, injectors disconnected, with the exception of that back one. I can't reach that back, uh, that back clip. So I thought I'd kind of move this out of the way, and then pull it off. Yeah, we'll see. Best way I've been, uh, I found, is using this. It's raised up on the ends of the uh, connector, like that, and then you can pop it right off. And we'll be back in a bit. Okay, just to show you what's going on, we got all the injector connectors disconnected. I pulled the bracket off. I removed these two nuts, which unfortunately actually came out with the stud attached. So I'll have to clean that up. Hopefully it won't be a problem reinstalling. And since there's a little bit of flex pipe or flex tube in between the two uh, fuel rails, front and back, I was able to get enough flex to pop them off the injectors themselves. So the next step is to remove an injector. Usually they just come right out, but I'm not left-handed. Let me just see if I can get a grip on it. There we go. All right, so we got one out. And I can already see that it's extremely dirty, but I don't know yet whether it's completely clogged. So, Next step is let's clean this puppy up, put a battery on it, see if it operates, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, got this one injector pulled out. Just a quick way to test it, hook it up to a little 9 volt. I wouldn't use a car battery, you have a chance of uh, frying it real quick because I don't think it's 12 volts that goes directly to it. So the 9 volt works pretty good, just have to make sure the leads are not touching and one side uh, is marked with a plus symbol. Hopefully you can see it there. So obviously it's positive. And what you'll do when you connect it, if I can get my hands in the right position here, you should hear an audible click. There it is. So we know the little solenoid in there is working. So what I did to test this, is I connected it, then I sprayed gum out, straight through it and now a drop came out so that tells me it was uh, obviously clogged up right off the bat but eventually after spraying both ends and playing with it and letting it soak etc etc i was able to get a flow going through but at this point i don't think yeah i don't think i can do this one-handed here yeah, we got a little bit coming out. Spits and spurts. Mainly not. Anyway. I don't think I'm going to try to clean them. What I'm going to do is just grab some off eBay and slap them in there. Save some money, save some time. 